All right, guys. So I know it's been a while, but um, back with another video on the two valve, and I just kind of wanted to make a video of the stuff I've done to it. Um, pretty much did some like suspension work, got some new wheels, as you can see. Um, of course, long tube headers, and I just want to kind of make a review of all the stuff I did so far and my impressions of them. And I was just gonna make like a driving video and maybe some exhaust clips of the new exhaust and talk about the installs of each thing and yeah just kind of like a update video on what's all been going on with the car so let's get started all right this is the first startup in like a month i've been busy with work so i haven't got too much time to drive it mostly been driving the three valve started right up very smooth I haven't been able to drive it um, lately just because I've been so busy with work. I've been, been driving the three valve mostly to work. Um, but yeah, so basically since the last time we talked, um, I've installed long tube headers on the car. And when I did that, I installed, you know, new motor mounts, new hardware stuff along with that. Um, and yeah, it really it really woke up the car. And I also got a 93 octane tune from Brent Speed. And the car is just running really good with that tune. They did a really good job. Doesn't run rich or anything. The car always ran a little bit rich. Um, you know, when I when I was at a stop, I could smell like the exhaust smell. But after the tune, it's 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 very good. So, anyways, the long tube headers themselves were actually not too bad to install. Um, the hardest part was trying to reach all the bolts. I figured the hardest part would be dropping the K member. But honestly, to drop get to the point to drop the K member, it was only about two hours. It, it wasn't really that bad. The headers themselves sound awesome. Uh, I just played some exhaust clips for you guys, and the thing literally sounds like a NASCAR. Um, so I'll roll those clips right now. are long tube headers um, they're just the regular painted ones they're not um, ceramic coated or anything like that I don't really daily drive this car and the car is not really driven in the rain so I figured the regular just the regular the regular painted headers would be fine and so far they're holding up great there's not a spot of rust on them I've had them in for like six months now to be honest and no still no rust on the, on the headers the paint did burn off within like the first 15 minutes though so there's that so just to get deeper into the install the install itself took me about two days with my brother and John helping um, I would suggest this be a two-person job uh, just especially the K member part that that part there's hard getting back in or I would suggest you just get a tubular K member because you can just those are a lot lighter I think like some crazy number like 40 or 50 pounds lighter you can install that yourself but with the stock K member yeah you need to have another person to help you install it actually I had to get three people to help me install it just because it was that heavy and cumbersome um, so pretty much all you it's pretty a straightforward process the hardest parts I say were again um, putting back in the K member but actually installing the headers the hardest part was breaking loose the old EGR valve on the other headers because it was just really rusted on it had been you know corroded it had been through a lot so um, I was able to get it loose with some uh, I tried with PB blaster that didn't work so I tried the old school trick of half 
automatic transmission fluid in half acetone and it broke right loose so I would definitely recommend you do that and just get like a really long uh, crescent wrench and break it loose um, when you install the headers try to use as many of the factory uh, studs and nuts as possible it comes with bolts but people have been saying that bolts can back out. Um, I did use thread locker on the bolts, uh, so we'll see how that goes, but I tried to use as many of the factory studs and nuts as I could. And most of, most of them fit. I'd, I'd say like five out of eight on each side, five out of eight on each side fit, so that was pretty good. But yeah, so, um, and then after that, I would say the good thing about pace setter long tube headers is you can still remove the transmission without pulling the headers. If you get BBK, you're gonna have to pull one of the headers in order to remove the transmission. I think Pace Setter, American Racing Headers, and Cooks are the only ones where you can still pull the transmission. If you can find Mac headers, they can also pull the transmission with the headers still on, but they're out of business, so good luck with that. The Pace Setter is fit perfectly though. Um, drive shaft fit, uh, has plenty of room, no, I'm sorry, not the drive shaft, the steering shaft has plenty of room to fit. The um, Motor mounts all fit perfectly. The key member's not resting on the headers. And the X-pipe that came with the headers fits up perfectly as well. So I would highly recommend them if you don't live in a place where it's rusting out. But they do make ceramic headers. Pace Center does make ceramic headers, but they're a little bit more expensive. Or I guess you could paint them with the, um, like the high temp paint or whatever, but I, haven't, I, I didn't even want to bother with any of that. It doesn't drone really, which is surprising to me, but it's probably the loudest setup you can get besides straight pipes. Or maybe like Borla Attack or something like that. So, with the headers, the driving impressions, initially, one thing you notice with the headers is you feel like the exhaust a lot more. If that makes sense, you feel like you feel it kind of under your feet. The headers are not actually touching you, but it's just, it's just a lot louder in general. Um, like I said, the, the steering column cleared just fine with these headers, but I heard some people have trouble with the headers rubbing. On my three valve, the, the headers actually rub the steering shaft if you make a hard turn because the engine's leaning on the steering shaft. It only happens in a hard turn though, so it, I, just, I just left it. With the um, headers, apparently you don't need to have a tune, but I recommend having one just because your O2 sensors are farther down the stream and they may run a little bit rich because the air is taking a little bit longer for them to get there. Again, I don't know if that's actually true. That's just what I heard. Um, I always, I just put a tune on it just because I wanted one anyway. And like I said, it helped, it helped a lot. It definitely pulls a lot more up, up top. not making a ton of power but it, it, it still feels like it picked up a little bit but of course it's, it's not a coyote it's not gonna be but that's not really what I wanted anyway I just kind of want something fun yeah the headers with the 410 gears work out perfectly yeah sounds really good yeah I get compliments everywhere I go with this uh with this new setup. So I would recommend actually getting the 410 gears or 373s when you need to get headers because you do lose a little bit of low end torque. It's not enough for you to, to not put an install them. I would definitely install them. Um, but you do lose a little bit of torque. So with the 410s, it's actually pretty perfect. Yeah, this thing drives so much different than the three valve. It's crazy. You sit up so much higher. You um, the clutch is a lot lighter. So 
oh, some of the other mods I did to the car since the last time we talked was I completely redid the entire rear suspension. So I put Maximum Motorsports lower control arms, and those things are awesome. They're silent. The the um, the stock ones are pretty noisy. Here, let me go pull real quick for you guys. even worse you really got to spin it out to like 6500 in order to feel like you're moving because it because i was shifting like the three valve at like 5500 and it would like bog down when it because the next gear would turn it to like 4500 or anyway i digress but yeah i put the maximum motorsports control arms on there and the handling is so much better Also replace the upper diff bushings with polyurethane ones and for the upper control arms I had some um, uh, what is it B BMR upper control arms and those, those are actually pretty good but it was getting a little bit too stiff and when I go around corners it would hop a little bit so with the stock ones it, it's perfect it handles so much better now yeah so pretty much all the suspension is replaced on this car now the only thing I haven't done is like a tubular K member, but pretty much everything else is brand new, so the car is just very tight, handles very good. And I just like it. And the last thing I did was I put new wheels on there. Um, just because I had those 98 Cobra wheels, and they look good on video, but in person, the paint was starting to peel. And I didn't like the fitment in the back. I didn't like how much it tucked in, so I wanted to get some new wheels. So I got some of those. I, I'm gonna botch the pronunciation of this, but the odd, odd hand wheels, and I really like the way they look. And I put some um, ceramic coating on them too, so they're really easy to wash as well. Yeah, I just love the way this thing sounds. It sounds so sweet. on the two valve um i'm tr i want to do something else to the three valve what i want to do is i want to add some cams to it so i was looking at some um ford racing hot rod cams with the brent speed detroit rocker i really don't want to have to do cam phaser lockouts and i really don't want to have to worry about valve springs or piston the valve issues you know what i'm saying so i really just want the chop to be honest <laughs> and they all pick up around 20 to 30 horsepower so it's really not that big of a deal train coming right here. Let me roll up the window so I can still talk. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it with the two valve. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of update and take you guys on a little ride and talk about what I've done with the car so far. Um, still running good. Not, I think I want to, I think I really want to do boost on the two valve. I was thinking about cams, but I think the three valve would be better for cams just because of the ease of it. And the two valve would be better for boost because even with cams, the two valve will only make around 300 wheel horsepower. If you want to check out a really interesting Mustang build, um, check out McLovin's Fun House. He helped me out a lot with the headers installed, and he has a really good video on installing headers and also installing cams. And his car is full bolt on at this point, and uh, he makes some really cool videos. He has a lot of like hard acceleration videos and stuff like that, so he really helped me out. Or you can DM him on Instagram. But he's your go-to guy if you want to do a full bolt-on two valve. But as far as bolt-ons with this car, I'm pretty much done. I already have the throttle body and the um, the headers and the um, stuff, you know, stuff like that. I guess I could do underdrive pulleys, 
but I think I just want to do boost and just call the day. Um, just because, you know, you're just nickel and diming it at this point, just getting 10, 15 extra horsepower when boost, you can just get an extra 100. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Just wanted to update you guys on what's going on. And um, if you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe and I'll talk to you next time.